Many people, when they start programming, learn to program in an object-oriented style. This is taught as a method of sort of organizing your thoughts or how, uh, you know, things should be done best. In the best case, we can hope that it's a way to organize your thoughts and not, you know, a blind adherence to some kind of box diagram you created. But some, you know, some of us experienced in the trade realize that we can be tremendously more productive by dropping all of this nonsense. But I think it's interesting. There's an interesting reason why people are drawn to these ideas. And it's because it is entirely true that when you start off trying to program or write the, the thing to solve a particular particular problem or do a specific task. Often it is just too much to take in at once. So what we do as humans, I think, is that we look for ways to not have to think about things. This is kind of what branding does in the real world as well. You know, I see a brand and then I don't I don't have to think from first principles. I can just judge on my um, impression of the brand, let's say. But so people will do, you know, I don't know, it's been a while since I did this, but they'll say they're, you know, they'll do something almost akin to drawing a mind map, which is basically they start putting pins down. Uh, you know, it might be, oh, I have a class called the car, you know. And then it has some members, and then I'm going to have a class, uh, Mercedes, by space, well, Renault, all the cool people who drive Renault, right? So, you Renault extends car, and then you're sort of, in a way, throwing darts at the dartboard of the problem space and just locking things down. You're making it, that's the thing, you're not making it con concrete, but you are adding constraints. And in a way, you could see, say, this is analogous to getting lost in the desert. When coming in fresh to the programming task, you're lost in the desert. You don't know what to aim for. You don't know what the immediate thing you need to do is. You have no guardrails. And so by throwing down these arbitrary constraints, I'm going to have a class this. It's going to extend from this. My boss or somebody gave me this diagram. I just had to implement the diagram. Right. The interesting thing that that does is it gives you a to-do list of things to do. So suddenly you enter the space of, oh, it's obvious what I, like, I'm trying to do this. It's a system that gives you lots of things to do. The reason it's bad, though, is because those things you're doing have absolutely nothing to do with the fundamentals of the problem. And to rephrase it, you know, all the time spent optimizing or adhering to constraints that have nothing to do with your problem. You know, it's the less time you spend on the real constraints. The better, even the best way to say that is probably the classic Mike Actonism of time spent solving problems you don't have is less times less time spent solving problems you do have. And this is, you know, you'll see this with, with new programmers where they have a desire to, I guess they've been taught that it's very important to generalize early on because they're thinking, and they're actually, in a way, they're trying to be efficient, right? Is that they, instead of just having, you know, uh, I'm saying, I, I'm, let's see, we're going with the class example here because that's, you know, um, what this type of programmer is often doing. But you'd you'd have a have a class, and instead of having you know the class, say I have a you know a, a quaternion or something. Um, instead of just saying, this is actually the the best case for one of these because I can't actually, I've seen some crazy stuff, but um, it's not coming to mind. Point is, instead of making a quaternion that just does uses f thirty two, it just uses f sixty fours, right? They'll want to be generic and say, oh, I'm going to have a quaternion over type T. 
and then t could be anything and so you know the, the basic version of this that's slightly less harmful is oh i'm gonna i'm it's a waste i'm gonna save time i'm gonna be more effective by solving the problem of both a quaternion for vec for f32s and for f64s at the same time and then you know depending on how into this you are you might throw in oh but what if they want a quaternion you know with ints and what about fixed point this and fixed point that and um you know can i can i iterate the members of a quaternion is that is that something i can do what about serialization i haven't thought about serialization right and there, 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 there's this thing where people try to be effective by solving all the problems at the same time, including many they don't have. And because that's so intractable, they then put down arbitrary constraints, like I'm going to have this class hierarchy, or this guy extends from that guy, etc. And 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 what's interesting to me is that the the fundamental drive is correct uh you do want to be more effective but actually counterintuitively being effective is about solving the problems you actually do have and the way you get stuff done is you want constraints but not the constraints of an arbitrary object hierarchy or some kind of ideas you want the real constraints of the real problem right Many programmers, because it's so hard, they box themselves into this corner. They, they again, like the branding example, they're simplifying their worldview in order to get things done, which is correct. But they simplify by discarding reality in favor of their imagination of the problem. They essentially confuse the map for the territory. And so you might hear like, oh, computers are fast. I don't need to care about performance. So I don't need to know how much memory this takes up or um, stuff like that, where, where you're dismissing the fundamentals of the problem when, you know, you should, in order to be effective, you want constraint. You actually want to know about the physical realities of the problem. Um, this is, for example, very evident, you know, the stuff I'm doing on Serenum now with the window manager there are locked in constraints from early on where I early, I didn't know what, what resolution am I going to target for the window manager? Because to target any resolution is, um, well, it's both way more work. Although you probably long term, you probably want to do that. But on this device, there will be an optimum resolution for most things. And so, I did some work to figure out what is the best resolution, I think. And then I've selected that. I've locked in that constraint. That's not an arbitrary constraint. It's a constraint that's there to try and push me in the direction of the best solution. In this case, it happens to be that, okay, the biggest performance bottleneck from while rendering, according to my own testing, is the DDR3 bandwidth on this uh, computer that's the biggest the weakest link so to speak and so okay we're going to push less pixels because that give, gives us the biggest savings there and it allows us more flexibility for for the rest of the pipeline right right, right now we're at 1080p but um, the only way this editor can run at 1080p is by being an exclusive full screen where it can selectively render the character changes that happen from frame to frame and that way it doesn't have to it reduces the amount of memory it's pushing and so yes so i locked in early at 800 by 600 okay this is our resolution now this makes my life so much simpler because not only is a, const a constraint is both it's both a goal and expectation i have to meet this i have to I I um I both have to strive for this thing, meet this goal, hit this criteria. But I can also rely on the constraints. So once I've locked in, okay, we're going to be at 800 by 600. Great. Now, I don't need to worry about DPI for my fonts. Right? Before at any resolution, 
I would have needed to rasterize out the fonts at load time. You know, I don't know. Maybe I need to have some complex glyph scaling. Maybe I need to support the full TTF file format to have good looking fonts at all the different resolutions. But now, since the resolution is fixed, I can say, okay, given that the, I have a fixed resolution and I can depend on that not changing, um, I can then derive from that, okay, what is the ideal font size for this resolution on a normal display? Okay, now I can lock in a font size where I say, okay, so the monospace font we're going to be using is this font. I baked it, I have pre-rasterized it, put it here. It's very small, very easy to render. Um, when that's locked in, that allows me to then say, well, because I know it's this specific font, I can now tailor all my rendering instructions to this. And they can also go both ways. So for example, I know that I'm going to be rendering this font using a RISC-V vector version seven uh, or 0 0.7 uh, sort of vector of SIMD processor, okay? That's very interesting because now I can tailor the data format of the font to the processor it has to run on. So I can make my font rendering be, oh, we're actually going to put the data in the font file that we then bake into the executable. My pre-processing pipeline to produce that font is going to produce the font um, in such a way where, where it's actually already in the correct, like it's a, it's a SIMD, CPU SIMD, V vector mask used to mask on and off reads and writes on CPU instructions. And I can just load those straight from memory because I'm locked in this constraint. So it's like one constraint yields the ability to make more constraints. And the, it narrows and narrows my problem and it makes it much, much, much easier and straightforward to implement. Because compared to the object oriented example, where you're wondering you know, random circles, you know, I, I, I did A and then that led to B and I have to do C and D. And and uh, this is not very clear from the text, but you're sort of moving around, you're not moving towards the target. You're not getting towards your end goal. But the constraints are the same thing where I have given myself structure. I know what to work on next. But it's actually driving me in the right direction because my constraints are not the arbitrary whims of my imagination that I came up with, but they are the real world, the actual real world constraints of on my problem. And not only the ones imposed, but the ones I found and locked in myself. And I'm trying the whole time to put in more constraints because that's such a powerful mechanism to getting more stuff done. Anyway, enough of my rambling, you know, use constraints. They're very good. These are classic Mike activisms. It's nothing new. It's just a reminder. And of course, uh, stop object orienting, but you already knew that.